Hello everybody, welcome back to 10 Minute Reviews. I'm Jason, bringing you today's episode. The fuzzy one is wandering around here somewhere, Freya, she may put in an appearance. As always guys, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. This is our small little family channel. We love doing this, we love to talk about books. We want to bring you guys as many books as we can. We'd appreciate any support that you guys want to give us just to subscribe would be fantastic. So today I want to talk about a fantasy book, um, or fantasy series actually. I'm not going to talk about the book, I want to talk about a series. And as always, I'm going to talk about four things. I'm going to talk about the world, the characters, the plot, and the writing style. So I want to talk about Dave Duncan and his King's Blade series. Um, I've just got right here uh, Paragon Lost. It's one of the series. I've got a whole bunch of them back there. Uh, but it's a series. And starting out with the world, the world is fantasy world, um, Middle Ages kind of of thing. It's not, I won't call it swords and sorcery. There is some magic in it, but I won't call it swords and sorcery because it's all, it's primarily swords. There, there's a little bit of magic, like I said, but it's swords. It's swords, hence King's Blades. And, uh, but otherwise, yeah, you've got your standard thing. You've got the king, you know, you've got kings and dukes and barons and multiple countries, multiple kingdoms, stuff like that. That's the world. As far as the characters go, so the characters are the king's blades, and some of them are legendary blades, some of them are not, but they, the, the, every book, for the most part, has different uh, blades in it. Some, some of them will cross, some of them will show up multiple times um, as side characters, very few are they the main character more than once, um, and it, it even covers time periods, and changes happen within the kingdom that are due to events within the book, so they, they do connect well together. But here's the fascinating thing. This is what really, really, really drives the, the King's Blades books and the various plots of each individual book, is what the blades themselves are. So the King's Blades are, I don't want to call them orphans, although most of the time they are orphans, but they can be... Um, you know, acknowledged children that are sent, but basically they get sent to a school, an orphanage, uh, a boarding school kind of thing, where they are taught swordsmanship. They're they're taught how they're they're taught many different things. It's a school, um, and especially because they're expected to interact with the nobility and the nobles and the gentry, but they are primarily taught swordsmanship uh, because the king's blades are the premier swordsmen in the kingdom in a way, in the world, mostly because of the magic that occurs. Now, all the blades are not King's Blades, but they're, they're called blades, and the King's Blades kind of play a major part in it, because the majority, say over half of them, become King's Blades. But basically, the blades, once they, they reach a certain age and skill level, they become eligible to be bound. Basically, as they rise up the rankings, next time a blade is needed, the number one rank gets taken. Then number two becomes number one, so on and so forth. Sometimes they need three or four blades, so one through three, one through four might be taken. But it's what happens when they are taken that it drives so much of what goes on. So they are trained up as these premier swordsmen. But then they are magically bound. Now if they become one of the king's blades, then the king binds them. If not, then if they become the blade to a a baron or even a businessman. They can be given by the king to anybody. Uh, the king's blades are basically bodyguards. They're not soldiers. They are not assassins. They are not um, nobles. They are bodyguards. That is what they are. The magic that binds them, in order to bind them, the king or whoever else is binding, whoever is being gifted this blade, actually has to kill them. Has to run a sword through their heart during a magical ceremony. If it's done properly, it will not kill them. They'll feel like they're dying, but it will not kill them. And when the sword is withdrawn, they will heal. And they, all blades have a scar. But from that point forward, they're magically bound to the person that, that, uh, that bound them, that stabbed them. And that magic holds them tight. They, they cannot escape. It's almost like a Gius. They cannot escape it. They always know where their principal is. If, if they're separated from their principal, they get antsy, they get itchy, they start they, they start going crazy in a way. They Their principle always seems to glow, uh, so they always know where, where they're at. Um, supposedly, and it's happened in the books, if the principle dies, the blade will go insane. Um, now, most blades prefer to be one of the king's blades because 
the, the only time a blade can really take off is when their principal is being guarded by another blade. That's the only time that, they're, that the magic will kind of relax and let them be away from the person they are guarding. So when they're gifted to somebody else that, that needs a blade or needs a bodyguard, they're basically 24-7. They can't ever take time off. They can't ever go do their own thing, go out to dinner, go relax, go have fun, go get a drink, go gambling, because the magic won't let them. They are unable to do it. But that magic that binds them also makes them perfectly loyal, impossible to, to turn. They will never betray their principal and, and uh, makes them just the perfect, perfect bodyguards. And these books really explore that dynamic and, and what can happen, uh, especially if... Uh, and, but the thing is, they're not fools. Sometimes they will work around or against their own principal, especially if they don't believe in them. But sometimes, just to do what is best for their principal, they will lie to them. Then... They, you know, the, 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 um, the magic certainly doesn't prevent them from, from slapping their principal upside the head and tying them up if it keeps them safer. So they're, they're awesome books. I, I, I can't really describe how great Dave Duncan's King's Blades books are. If you were a fantasy fan, if you're a fantasy lover, you would absolutely love them. If you are a fan of, say, David Eddings, um, the King's Blades are almost perfectly right in line with that. Um, David Douglas, you probably enjoy uh, Dave Duncan. Um, Ari Salvatore, if you're an Ari Salvatore fan, you'd probably really enjoy Dave Duncan and the King's Blades. So if you're a fantasy fan, after you hit the like and subscribe buttons, please go check out Dave Duncan and his King's Blades. Thank you everybody for watching. We'll catch you next time. Bye now.